In the beginning was the end of emptiness and the power to create something out of nothing. God was a storyteller, wasn't he? And English teachers, English teachers will tell you that the conflict comes after the beginning, but they're wrong. Conflict is the beginning, and before the beginning. Forget original sin and the fall of man. It isn't the guilt of Adam we inherit, but the original conflict set in motion at the creation of the world. And every new conflict arrives on the wake of that one. Every new conflict is born in that collision of something and nothing. And every time you begin a new story, you bring a new conflict into this world. But if you know the first thing about stories, then you know every story has to start somewhere. For mine, this seems as good a place as any. This is the story of the girl from Bear Cove of her mother, and her father, and of the boy she loves, and of her sister, that's me, and of the voices she hears in her head. It's early February in Bear Cove. Don't tell fish stories where people know you, but particularly 
don't tell them where they know the fish. <laughs> well, <laughs> my family has been of a similar mind, only they're more like to say, don't tell anybody anything. So, the day my big sister had to come back home, it's naturally a day marked by silence. This is Bear Cove. In the beginning, a small Calvinist flock, now largely persuaded to be more forgiving doctrines of the Unitarians and Congregationalists, but the real religion around here is secrets. People worship their own privacy and the invasion of others. We keep our troubles to ourselves and our tragedies behind closed doors. No family wants their business in the town square. And my big sister, my parents' little lamb, the girl with the golden halo of hair, the one who seemed forever touched by a special kind of light. She was always quiet. The day we brought her home, she was so quiet. It was as if she didn't even know that we were there. And we knew that she would bring our business right to everyone's front door. Hair so gold, 
Our mother used to wash it with lavender shampoo to take some of the metal out. She had delicate hands and tiny feet, and an electric green undercurrent ran just beneath the surface of her skin. The tail she could have been a mermaid. She certainly didn't look like any of us, our parents or me. But I didn't know this girl sitting on my sister's bed, and she didn't seem to know me. When she spoke, it wasn't to any of us. My sister, who had never really been of this world, now didn't even seem to be part of it. She had gone somewhere I could not follow. What's the matter, girl? What's on your mind? Did you lose something? Or someone. What is this place? This is nothing. This is nowhere. This is a brand new world. Is that? Mama? No mother's here, girl. No father's here. Nothing here. Just us. Just you. They say blood is thick, water is fine. There's a share of blood to all the share of mine. So you can come with us. Gentlemen, 
And if you can't find one, it's probably you.
two sisters. One like the marsh, and one like the sea. They were good. They were happy. <laughs> one day, down by the water, the two sisters came upon a duckling with his bill caught in an old boat propeller. Uh -huh. The sisters freed the duckling, but found that his beak had been warped by the accident. His lips now parted like a horn. But the duckling honked his thanks and was happy enough, and the sisters fed him soft breadcrumbs from their pockets. Some time passed, and the girls had grown up a little. One day, they set to sea in a little skiff, and relaxing in the sun and the spray, they fell asleep. When they awoke, a thick and heavy fog had settled on the ocean top, and it was dark. They couldn't see an inch around their boat. The older and prettier and more delicate of the two began to cry. The sisters feared they were lost forever. Just then, they heard a familiar sound in the darkness, a sound like a foghorn. The older said, surely all is lost. A boat is coming and they will not see us in the dark. And as the sound grew closer and closer, the sisters were sure the boat would swallow them up. But... No boat came. And no sooner could they make out a small shadow in the darkness than that shadow revealed itself to be the little duckling with the horn-shaped bill. <laughs> the duckling had grown some, too. And he honked with delight to find his old friends. He led the sisters back to shore, and they were safe. And they were happy. <laughs> Somewhere in these stories, there was a sister lost like mine. And somewhere in these happy endings, a way to reach her. How the devil married three sisters, a younger sister, to drag the others out of hell. The Wizard of Oz, a few clicks of the heel, and a longing for home. Tommy. A broken mirror. Foghorn Duck was a story I used to tell her back when I would tell her stories every day. A story I invented just for her. My sister, lost in the dark. Maybe that was all she needed. A familiar voice in the fog. Where are you running to, girl? There's nowhere to run. There's nowhere to hide. We know what you seek. We only want to help. Remember? He's only lost, girl. Not, not wrong. Not forever. Take me to the place you go when you're alone. Some days you
thing for me? Our parents took her to the best doctors in the state. Brain doctors, speech therapists, head shrinkers, and every kind of specialist, but none could make my sister speak. The princess who never smiled. The princess who never spoke. This is the last time. Who else she's got? I just can't watch them. I know. Like she's some I kind know. of. I know. They keep saying it's not schizophrenia. It's not schizophrenia. Then who is she talking to? It's not to us. It's not to any of us.
voice. Day 1631, 
Governor Bradford is enraged. All but three women. A little girl is missing. Story girl, don't say a word. No heroes, no glory girl. Don't say a word. It's not your story girl. Better learn to behave. Go on, be good for me, girl. Not your story, girl. Not your tale to tell. This is my story, girl. It's not yours to tell. The Snow Queen. Long, long ago, in a land of bloom, lived a boy in the garden that grew in his room. Oh, I could 
straight to the hospital. Some passing hunter saved her life. Isn't that always the way with fairy stories? A passing hunter cuts open the belly of the beast, and that little girl who walked straight into that wolf's mouth goes free. He found her floating face up in the river. The fair... She was still cold when we brought her home. I'm going down.
story. Not so long ago, in a land I know, lived a girl with a sister who loved that girl so. I'll see to you, Scott. You just let me know what they are. From hell or high tide, I will never let you go. I'm crying. Would you let me go? Would you leave me alone? No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no. What's wrong? 
What are you looking at? What's Why are you here? Is everything there's a season? No. For the right you were gone. For though I may be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit. No. You were gone. Oh my darling, oh my darling, oh my darling, glad inside. You are lost and gone forever. Oh my darling, glad Get out of my head! Every word of the truth. 
This is a dream. Yes. And you left me. I never left you. I was only lost for a while. I could never. What is surreal? your family. My home. I could be your home.
can't. I. That goddamn pageant! I don't know. My little girl. My little girl, too. This is all my fault. No, don't do that. I'll kill him. This isn't about I know. We didn't know. I just. This isn't about I know.
way. So it's not a happy ending. But we've talked about endings, haven't we? And this is not a fairy tale. A familiar voice. True love's kiss. A single word spelled out in shards of ice. Orpheus and Eurydice finding the right song and never looking back. the best we can hope for. It's a happy beginning. There was a time